This is video three in section two, the template. In this video, we'll focus on automating a text template using A to J document assembly tool, the A to J DAT. Reminder, all template creation takes place within the templates tab. If your interview has templates in it, here's where you'll see all of them. By default, only the active templates show, but you can also toggle to your deleted templates and restore them if you need to. This video will focus on the creation of text templates. So on the templates tab, you're going to click create text template. The text template starts off as a blank slate. You have open space and it's your job to add elements to it to build out the template. Before we move into the templates that can be added, let's talk about what you're seeing on the screen here. In the top left corner is a field that says untitled template. Here's where you can name your template. In the far right corner are the save template and test template buttons. The main space in the middle that currently says this template is empty is your blank canvas. This is where the elements will be added. The main editing tools are in a panel on the right hand side of the screen. There is the add element section and the template options section. We'll cover the template options first because those apply to the entire template. First off is the custom header and custom footer. These two buttons, as their names imply, let you add a custom header and or a custom footer to the document. You have the full editing options of the rich text editor, so you can do things like embolden, underline, change the font size, add lists, etc. Also important to note is the checkbox at the bottom of the element that lets you designate that this header or footer should not be used on the first page. Below the layout options are the formatting options. These control the font type, size, and section numbering for the entire template. At the bottom is the conditional logic checkbox. Once checked, you can type into the field that says only use this template if conditional logic is used when you want to insert this entire template if some variable is true, false, greater than, less than, equal to, or not equal to, some other variable, or a set value. You'll use this if the template isn't meant for everyone who might use your A to J guided interview. For example, this is an additional cover sheet that only applies if the end user lives in a specific county. To build out the content of your text template, you will need to add elements to it. The available elements are section, rich text, page break, if else, and repeat loop. I'll cover what each of these does and how to use the elements individually, except the legal nav if else element. That was added for a project we did with the Legal Services Corporation and Microsoft that isn't germane to general authoring. The first two elements to talk about are section title and page break. Section title allows you to put a title or heading into your template. The field that says section title is editable. You can choose the title size from heading one to heading six, with heading one being the largest size and heading six being the smallest. You can also choose to underline the heading or not. The page break element lets you insert a page break into the template. It will force a split in your assembled document and anything under the page break element will appear on the next printed page. The rich text editor is where you'll likely spend the majority of your time in text template building. This is where you will build out the content, including the text and the variables you want inserted. This video shows me adding a variable after typing some text. The rich text editor has many editing tools built into it for you to use. To point out a couple, you can embolden, italicize, underline, create lists, and change the orientation of the text. The uncommon editing elements have helper text that appears when you hover over the element. So if you're not sure what it does based on the image, you can get some context from that helper text. Another important one to point out is the one you saw on that video where I clicked the V that's in brackets. This is the variable insertion tool. It allows you to insert a variable into the text. When you click the bracketed V, the variable picker will pop up. You can type the name of the variable and select it, or you can scroll all the variables in your interview and pick the one you want to insert. A difference from the PDF template tool is that you cannot create variables in a text template. All the variables you want to use have to exist already in the variables tab. If they don't, like you're building out the template before you create the interview, you'll need to add all the variables you want to use in the variables tab first, then insert them into the template. Also make sure to hit save and close when you're done with the rich text editor to actually save all those changes you just made. If else conditionals are another element that can be added to your text template. This conditionally inserts a section, page break, rich text chunk, or repeat loop. You script a condition like if 
Variable one is true. Insert this chunk of text. For example, if tenant city TE equals Chicago, insert the specific language that only relates to tenants that live within the city of Chicago's boundaries. Sometimes you'll want to insert one piece of text if the condition occurs and another if it doesn't. Like in that previous example, if the tenant lives inside the city of Chicago's boundaries, some content is appropriate. But if they don't, some other content still needs to be added. So you check the else clause checkbox to expand the element and include the else clause section. Your condition can be evaluated if true, if false, if it equals a variable or a text value, if it doesn't equal a variable or a text value, if it's greater than or if it's less than a variable's value or a text value. The condition you've set displays in the header of the element. In the video here, you can see I add if client first name equals Jane, and that text appears in the yellow header type space of this element. Again, make sure to hit save and close to actually save this inserted element. The next element to discuss is the repeat loop. Repeat loops are used when you want to gather the same type of information from an end user multiple times. The example I'll use here is for children's information. You want to know the first and last names, the age, and the address of all the user's children. You don't know ahead of time how many children each user will have. So you set up a repeat loop that asks the user upfront how many children they have. Then you ask them the series of questions about their children, however many times they told you in that how many question. In the template, you can display this repeated information in three ways. The first is with a table. Each repeat loop can have a title and a title size. Then you can decide how many times you want to repeat this information. You can set it for a specific number of times, but most commonly it'll be set based on a variable's value, namely the counting variable that's set by the number of times the user goes through the repeat loop. You can adjust the number of columns and their relative size to each other within the table. You can also add labels to each column as seen in the lower screenshot. In the pink outline screenshot, I have a repeat column title of children's information and four columns. I've selected the bordered column type, but I could also choose condensed, which just puts a line under the column labels, or striped rows, which alternates striping of colors. I've adjusted the column size to make first and last name combined take up 50% of the space, then only 10% of the space for age, since it'll likely only be a one or two digit number, and address to have 40% of the available space. The last step with the table repeat loop is to insert the variables. You click into each column and type the variable name that you want to use. This is what it looks like with variables inserted in each column. Repeat loops can also be displayed in a list. With a list, you can decide what type of list you want with the options of bulleted, numbers, lowercase alphabet, uppercase alphabet, lowercase Roman numerals, or uppercase Roman numerals. You can also label the items to be repeated. Here I have first and last name. The final decision to make with repeat loop lists is whether you want each item repeated in one list or if you want the entire list repeated. On the screen, you can see the differences. On the left side, each item is repeated before moving on to the next item. So first name one, first name two, then last name one, last name two. On the right side, the entire list is repeated. So first name one, last name one, then first name two, last name two. Your choice will depend on the form you're creating and the type of information you're collecting as to which one works the best for you. In this example, I'd likely choose the entire list to be repeated because it makes more sense to keep the first and last name of each person together. The final option for configuring your repeat loop is a text chunk. This gives you the same heading labeling options and repeat options of a set number of times or based off a counting variable as the list and table styles. But here you get the full rich text editor to use if you want to display chunks of text like a paragraph with the repeated information. Now that we've covered all the possible elements, let's talk about a few more things that you might want to do with your elements. The options I'm about to talk about are found at the bottom of each element and are the same regardless of the element you're using. You can move elements around either with the four-way arrow, which lets you pick up the element and jump at as many spots as you want, or you can move them up or down a spot. I recommend using the move them one spot option up or down because the code can get a bit confused if you're dragging elements around and jumping lots of spaces. The other side of the screenshot shows you that you can duplicate or delete the current element. Pro authoring tip, 
If you accidentally delete an element, there's a restore option that pops up for a little while. It does eventually go away though, so if you delete, you can reverse it, but not forever. Whenever you complete a template, you always want to be testing. Depending on whether you have your interview done or not, you may need to wait to test assemble with an answer file until you complete your interview. But when you're ready to test assemble, you click the test assemble button in the top right hand corner and load an answer file. Then check to make sure the assemble document looks like what you expect. That brings us to the end of video three and also the end of section two, the template. By now you should understand how variables work within templates, how to create PDF templates, how to create text templates, and why you choose one template type over another. Check the course landing page for any applied workflows or training exercises that you may have missed, and make sure to check out section three, which covers the interview.